So give me the faith to finish the race. Look it up, got my eyes on you. I'll follow your lead, whatever it takes. Give it up, give it all for you. I won't worry about tomorrow. Cause I know that you know where I'm going. Good evening and welcome to our next installment of Wednesday Word. I am really excited this week as we have Rob Weir here from our missions leadership team. He is the interim chair of this team and he's been doing a fantastic job and it's been a real blessing since I've been here to, to get to know more about the missions of Calvary Bible Church. And what I'd like to do before we get to Rob is to share uh, from Colossians chapter four and I'll start in verse two where it says this, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving, praying at the same time for us as well that God will open up to us a door for the word, so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ, for which I have also been imprisoned, and that I may make it clear in the way I ought to speak. Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace, as though seasoned with salt, so that you will know how you should respond to each person. As to all my affairs, Tychicus, our beloved brother and faithful servant and fellow bond servant in the Lord, will bring you information. So this evening what we have is a, a fellow laborer, a fellow bond servant, and a beloved brother bringing us information about the missions ministry of Calvary Bible Church. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the blessing it is to be able to be here with Rob. And I ask, Lord, that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would continue to bless the missions ministry of Calvary Bible Church and specifically bless each and every one of our missionaries. Lord, we pray for the missions leadership team that you would continue to grant them wisdom and help them as they help us to be excited about missions and to invest in the evangelization of the world. And we ask this to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Rob, how's everything going? What's been going on with our missionaries? <laughs> okay, well, I'm very thankful to be here, be able to share a little a bit, some bits of news that we've been receiving from our missionaries. Uh, as we've all been uh, confined to our houses, sometimes it's easy to get focused just on ourselves, and I'm hoping that tonight we can share some exciting uh, bits of information from some of our missionaries to encourage you with what's still going on with missions around the world. Mm -hmm. Just earlier this morning, we received a letter from Pastor Kopp in Burma, Myanmar, and uh, he shared that they are going through some of the very same things that we are, that in mid-March, uh, everything shut down. They had to close their Bible school, their school for children, they had to stop holding uh, church services. They had to cancel their plans for summer English classes and summer camps. But as you're going to hear a theme from each one of these missionaries, uh, uh, he started his letter with uh, talking about Paul in uh, Second Timothy, I think it is, being in bonds, but Paul says, God's word is not bound. And he is finding ways, creative ways, to share God's word even in this situation. Now, he's doing stuff online, much as we are, but he had a very innovative way of uh, spreading God's word. And uh, Pastor Dom, you might want to think about this. <laughs> he has put some huge loudspeakers on the top of his building and pointed them to, uh, towards the nearby town. And every morning, he preaches the gospel through those speakers, and every evening he gives a devotional from one of the Psalms and broadcasts that over their speakers to the whole town. So I was thinking we have a housing development just over the, the right. knoll here. Yeah. We could put speakers on the church roof. and, <laughs> and uh, That could... sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's a little news from uh, Pastor Kopp in Burma. Uh, we heard earlier this week from Miguel and Miriam Garoni. Uh, these dear saints we've supported for many, many years. They're in their 80s now. Uh, they in, are in Argentina. And uh, even though they're in their 80s, they're using technology. Uh, 
Miguel is recording five minute Bible messages and sending them out by WhatsApp. And Miriam is doing the same. She's recording Bible lessons for women. And she says she is ministering to 84 women via these messages that she sends out. I think she's using WhatsApp also. Uh, women in Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil. And so God's word is going forth. These dear saints, they're confined as well. Um, Miguel used to like to walk through the neighborhood for his exercise. He's now doing laps in his yard. So uh, many of our missionaries are under the same restrictions we are. Um, George and Vera Dupa are missionaries in Ghana. Would you believe they are actually right now in Hanover? Uh, they arrived in Hanover, I think it was March 7th or March 8th. They had plans to visit their supporting churches on the East Coast. They had plans to drive out to Michigan. And within a week or so of them being here, everything shut down. And so they are staying in one of IPM's missionary houses here in Hanover. Uh, George is working on his doctorate, so he's not wasting time. Uh, he needs to get his doctorate so their Bible school in Ghana can get its accreditation. And uh, we are hoping to have George and Vera with us in June if we have services by then. Mm -hmm. um, IPM, International Partnership Ministries, uh, the agency, mission agency that was started out of this church um, 40 years ago maybe. It's located here in town. This week they're holding an online uh, missions conference. And I watched that uh, Monday evening and uh, we heard from Fadi and Eliana, uh, our, two of our newest missionaries. And uh, they, likewise, in Lebanon, are under uh, home confinement. But Fadi works with an online seminary. They have close to 200 men studying God's word mm -hmm. via online seminary. And he says this... Uh, pandemic that we're having has actually increased the involvement of the students. They have more time to study, and some of the students that had uh, stopped being active, active have now rejoined and are working hard uh, in their studies. And uh, they are ministering through this online seminary to men in many of the Arab nations, as well as in Europe and in Australia, where some of the Arabs have uh, emigrated to. And then lastly, I'll just mention Dan and Amy Dwyer. We heard from them on Sunday. They're in lockdown uh, in Uganda, and they aren't allowed to drive their vehicle. Uh, so to get groceries, they have a mile to walk to the grocery store and then carry their groceries back home. It's about a mile walk to get to their church building hmm. and uh, a mile walk to about anything they, uh, they need and they're just rejoicing that it's not more than that because they know of other people who are not in such a convenient location and who have much further to walk. Uh, they likewise are ministering through uh, online means, recording uh, their messages. And uh, Dan shared that some of the young men in their uh, locality, in their neighborhood, have actually come and I don't know how they handle it. I'm sure they maintain a uh, safe distance, but I've come to watch his messages. Uh, they are near uh, Dan and Amy's home. And they're rejoicing that two of those young men came to know the Lord on Easter mm -hmm. Sunday. Amen. Uh, Dan's been posting, uh, using social media. And uh, a week or so ago, he posted online about having peace in the midst of all this turmoil. And in a young man who had visited their church months and months ago, and they hadn't seen him since, replied to his post and said, how can I have that kind of peace? Mm -hmm. And Dan was able to interact with him and lead him to the Lord as well. And so in spite of what's going on with this pandemic, uh, our missionaries are just rejoicing that God is opening uh, new opportunities to share God's word Oh, I forgot one last one. We heard from the Zartmans. Uh, Tom, I think, is also in his 80s. His ministry has been going door to door for years distributing Christian literature. Wow. He can't do that now. Hmm. He's also been training elders 
with the idea that one day he would turn over uh, responsibility for his ministry to those elders? Well, guess what? This pandemic has provided motivation hmm. for that turnover because these young men have stepped up. They have the knowledge on how to use technology. And so they're stepping up and using this time to increase the outreach of Tom's ministry through social media and other electronic means. And Tom has now decided that he set a date as of the end of this year to turn over the ministry uh, mm -hmm. to the oversight of uh, these elders. So God is at work around Amen. the world. Yeah. Uh, and uh, shall I take a minute or two then just to mention how our folks can yeah, that'd, that'd be great. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I just, just want to say a couple things. I, I just want to remind you that a big chunk of our budget goes to support these missionaries. I think mm -hmm. it's something like $200,000. Mm -hmm. And so just a challenge to us, we need to remain faithful in our giving during these times mm -hmm. because our missionaries depend on, on the monthly support that we uh, send them. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, they depend on us for our prayer support. Amen. Yeah. And I would just remind you to keep praying for our missionaries. Our office staff has been faithfully compiling the missionary prayer requests and uh, doing up the prayer sheet that we used to include as a bolt and insert mm -hmm. on the first Sunday of each month. Mm -hmm. You now get that with your monthly newsletter. Mm -hmm. I'd encourage you to print that out and mm -hmm. use that to pray for our missionaries. Yeah. If you made a commitment at last fall's missions conference to pray for missionaries with those yellow cards and you've forgotten about those i'd <laughs> encourage you to dig those out mm -hmm. and uh start praying again for the missionaries that you promised to pray for if you need some more information about our missionaries we get uh email updates from almost all of them and if you would email the mlt it's just mlt at cbc-hanover.org mm -hmm. and say, I promise to pray for this missionary and this missionary. We can send you the most recent updates that we have from those missionaries so you have recent information. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, lastly, uh, I think Dave is going to include in this video uh, a video that we received from our missionaries in Haiti Royden and Danielle Saul. It's about a 12 minute update from them and how this pandemic has been affecting their ministry in Haiti. This is the location and the couple that our CBC team, short term team, went to in February and worked with them. So you'll even see a few pictures of our uh, CBC team in their video update. I'd encourage you to finish watching this video and get that update from the Sauls and just one brief update that they posted to Facebook just a couple days ago that's not in the video. They've bought an entire truckload of rice and they are distributing a full sack of rice to the family of each student that was in their elementary school uh, to help the, uh, the need for food there in their community. God is just really using them to impact that community for Christ. Mm -hmm. That is exciting, that's outstanding. Thank you so much, Rob, for yep. being here with us today. And, and let me encourage you as well to stay on and, and watch that great video. And I'll close us in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for our time together. Thank you for what Calvary Bible Church is doing in the world through our missionaries. We pray that you would bless each and every one of them, that you would provide for them, that you would use them to point countless people to you and to bless their lives through their efforts. Lord, we appreciate the blessing it is to be able to partner up with some of these great missionaries. And we ask that you would continue to grant to us faithfulness as we seek to pray for them and faithfulness as we seek to fund them and to support them. And we ask all this to the praise of your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hello everyone, my name is Royden, and this is my wife, Denny, and we are serving in the island of Haiti. Lately, we have received messages from many of you who are thanking and praying for us, and we thank you so much. It means so much to us. 
At the moment, we are here in Haiti working from home and homeschooling the boys. As usual, we are keeping in touch with our friends and family in the U.S. through phone calls and text messages, so that hasn't changed much. The Haitian borders have been closed, so no one is allowed entry or exit to the country at the moment. Most of the American missionaries left before the borders closed for fear that they would be stuck here for an unknown amount of time. One of the things we are most grateful for is a safe home and campus where we are able to isolate comfortably, which is something that many people around us don't have. In the past few weeks, we have sought guidance from the Lord about what He wants us to do during this time and how He wants us to serve our community. Our elementary school has been shut down once again, which is very disappointing to us and our students. You might remember that due to political troubles, schools were closed for most of last year. We had reopened ours in January for the first time since the summer break, and now we're closed again. Thankfully though, the clinic continues to function and serve patients each day. The government has promised to help with items like gloves, masks, and Clorox for cleaning. However, we still have not received any assistance from them. We are just making do with the limited stock that we have and checking daily for additional resources. Although we haven't had any confirmed cases of the coronavirus at our clinic, there have been about 32 cases in Haiti so far. Because of the lack of facilities, money, or medical workers, cases won't be confirmed as quickly or efficiently as they are in more developed countries. So it's really hard to know how many have actually been infected. Also, there's only one hospital in the whole country where people can get tested, and unfortunately, it's pretty far from where we are. The majority of Haitians cannot afford to stock up on food and have to work day to day just to survive. This makes quarantine almost impossible, and we're concerned about how fast the virus can spread throughout the country. Also, since there haven't been too many cases so far, it's been hard to get people to believe that the risk is real. Many are starting to believe that it's all just a hoax that the government is using to receive aid money from other countries. Yeah. One of the ways um, we've been able to help our community is to distribute food and financial help to many families as well as students who are away in the city for schooling without parents or family nearby. To fund these special outreaches, our mission board was um, able to send an additional $2,000 at the end of March. One blessing to report is the completion of a new storage container on campus. With the increase of gang activity and theft in our area and all over Haiti, we have been focusing on improving safety conditions on our property. It was quite an adventure to go down to our nearest town, to the docks and shop for a shipping container. And once we found one that we were able to purchase at an affordable price, it was another thing to try and get it transported up into the mountains where our campus was. Mm. But the addition of this shipping container means that we now have a secure place to store medication and supplies for the clinic. Also, you may remember that at the end of last year, we were having a fuel shortage and it was difficult to find and purchase gas and diesel for our generators. We're happy to report that the shortage has ended and we've had no issues finding fuel for the past couple of months. So thank you for your prayers. Regarding our finances, our mission board has suspended any fundraising for special projects during the pandemic. So we will be focusing only on our regular ministry work, which includes the clinic and its feeding program, general campus expenses, and assisting our 22 mission churches. We're praying that we won't have to let go any of our campus staff due to a lack of funds during this hard time. As we continue to pray for you and your families, we ask that you please pray for Haiti. Before this virus even started, we were already in a level four travel category, which is do not travel due to the increase in violence. Yeah. Right, allow me to take this time to encourage you in, in Christ. Please do keep in mind that what's happening right now is not bigger than our Lord. He is and will always be in complete control of everything. 
At the same time, do not harden your heart to learn different lessons that he wants to teach us during this time. I don't know about you, but I have been looking back and thanking God for the outreaches and events that we were able to have in 2019. It was nothing short of a miracle that we were able to hold Salem Bible School in July and then youth retreat in this past February. Now here are a few highlights from those events. Since our church services are suspended, it has been difficult to connect with our church members on a regular basis. This is the first time in my life that the doors of our church building have been closed for two weeks. Most of our members don't have access to the internet, so videos and online services are not an option. During this pandemic, I have also realized what an important role our campus staff place to keep everything running. With most of, our, of the staff at home now, a lot has now fallen on our shoulders to keep the campus functional. One prayer request would be in regards to the many false teaching causing a lot of trouble in Haitian churches. One pastor told his people that if they just keep a coconut with them at all times, then they will be safe from the virus. Another prophet in our area has been telling people to look for a piece of hair in the pages of the Bibles. If you find that hair, then you should boil it in, in water and then drink it, and you will be protected. Now, how sad to hear people that we know excited that they found their piece of hair and are now safe. Now, however, it has been encouraging to hear our members report back to me saying, that they know that this is not from God. I praise the Lord that they are remaining strong in their faith. 
even through these strange and uncertain times. I pray that we will have wisdom in how to best reach out to those who desperately need the Word of God at this time also. Although in a sense we have been busier during um, this time, it is still a good period to do some re-evaluation of our lives, family, and ministry that the Lord has given us. Again, may I encourage you to be receptive to what God wants to teach you. Although what you are going through is difficult, remember that it is just a state of life. Remember what Paul said when he wrote to the Philippians, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I am instructed to both to be full and to be hungry, both to be to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. May we continue to focus on His love, His grace, and His righteousness. May we keep each other close in prayer and please continue to be faithful to whatever God wants you to do. And may God continue to bless you all during this time. Goodbye.